A series of Israeli strikes hit multiple areas in central Syria, killing at least 14 people, wounding 43 and sparking fires. Syria state news agency Sana'a reported that Syrian air defenses confronted an aggression that targeted several points in the central region, damaging a highway in Hama province and sparking fires that firefighting teams were battling to control. Two regional intelligence sources said a major military research center for chemical arms production located near Misyaf had been hit several times. It is believed to house a team of Iranian military experts involved in weapons production. The attack on Sunday night sparked a fire and caused material damage near the city of Masyaf, in the Hama province, according to Sana'a. Israeli jets have often launched attacks against Syria from Lebanon, likely in a bid to avoid Syrian airspace where multiple regional and international forces, including those of Russia and the United States, operate. Throughout Syria's 13-year civil war, Israel has regularly carried out air raids in the country mostly targeting Iran-linked sites. There was no immediate comment from Israel, which typically does not comment on specific reports of strikes in Syria. Since the October 7 attacks by Hamas on Israeli civilians and soldiers, Israel has escalated its strikes on Iranian-backed militia targets in Syria and has also struck Syrian army air defenses and some Syrian forces. <laughs> Thousands of Israelis gathered in Tel Aviv on Saturday to protest against the government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and to call for the release of the remaining hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. Saturday's protest gathered the families of the hostages as well as anti-government protesters, the first time the two groups merged into one gathering rather than separate ones. It comes after the news that the bodies of six hostages, including that of an Israeli-American, were recovered from Gaza. That news was met with shock that quickly turned into anger last week as protests turned violent. Demonstrators have been out on the streets for months demanding new elections and criticizing the way the government has handled the war against the Hamas militant group. Efrat Machikawa, niece of hostage Gadi Moses, who was out protesting, said, bring the hostages with a deal. Do not risk their lives. A deal now. And stop sabotaging Mr. Abandonment. Stop betraying your own people for the sake of who knows what. If we want to, to, do it, to make a change here in Israel, we got to go out and shout for stop the war and for a deal now, and we've got to bring them back all home, the hostages, the alive, the ones, the dead ones, because otherwise there is no future to this country, really, can't see it happen. They were alive. Six young, beautiful people, innocent people. They were alive, they survived, they held strong just as Hersh's mom cried. Stay strong, he did, they all did. And yet, they were murdered in cold blood. And I think, you know, it took us a long time to actually grasp what happened on October 7th. We never thought, every time we get to some edge, we think nothing can get worse than this, but it does. And the fact that the terrorists killed them in cold blood, they shot them to death after they were alive for so long. It just cracked their hearts of an entire state. So I think even those who were maybe reluctant to go out, who are not used to protest, who are sad but prefer to be in private space within their sadness, understood our voice might must join together to a one huge scream. Bring the hostages with a deal. Do not risk their lives. A deal now. And stop sabotaging, Mr. Abandonment. Stop betraying your own people for the sake of who knows what.